Hey guys, welcome back to the episode by Bren World, and today we're doing a review, not an unboxing and review, just a review. But if you guys remembered, like, probably none of you, because it was like, uh, like three years ago or something now, I did a review for my first drone, which was the, um, Sky Viper M200 Nano Drone. Um, it's currently, I believe, my second or third highest viewed, uh, video on my channel. Um, so I figured I'd do one for this. Um, but also because this drone is much better. But yeah, I finally got a new drone. Um, on the last day vlog, as you guys saw, we did the tarp on my grandma's roof. Um, and I said there would be an update on the next day vlog. Well, we actually finished the job, and I'll just include it on this, um, um, I'll just include the pictures right now. Um, but yeah, so you can see that we, um, actually took the tarp and, um, made, and we took the tarp off, uh, because that was just a temporary, like, two-week thing, and now there's metal and stuff, so, as kind of a little reward like that, I talked, um, a few, a couple day vlogs ago, I talked about the amazing toys going out of business, so I actually got this for 40% off, um, so yeah, so this drone is actually usually about $100, um, but I actually got it for $49. Um, as you can see, it's not a nano drone, but it's still pretty darn small. It's actually, it, it's actually not insanely more heavier than that one, surprisingly, somehow. Um, and the battery is in it. Um, but yeah, so, um, this is, I'm gonna read this, because I can't remember it fully. Uh, yeah, so this is the Revolution, uh, Vizio camera drone. So yeah, so if you guys are wondering why um you only saw that other drone in the review video and then partly on that horrible mini movie called boom um it's because that one actually died i don't know if i ever told you guys this but it actually died about three months after i got it um if that i played with it quite a bit it all died within like three months of me having it so hopefully this one lasts longer um but yeah that one was thirty dollars um but yeah i got a lot of questions on that one too um, and including some people asking like me to do more videos on it, which I couldn't. Um, so I definitely explained it to those people, but here is this drone. But the other thing that is better about this drone is, um, this one is actually a filming drone. Um, it can take video and pictures, of course. Um, it doesn't say what revolution or resolution it is. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's, it looks like it's around 720p, um, which is pretty darn good for, I mean, even a hundred dollars for a drone that also takes in pictures and videos in 720p, I'd say. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, and, um, as you can see there, that is what it looks like from the top with Revolution. I have used it, of course, quite a bit already, so you, the, some of the propellers are somewhat scratched in the little logo, somewhat scratched, but you can see the little logo right there, and Revolution right there, and then Vizio right there, because this, the full name for this is, like, the, um, the brand that makes it is, um, called, like, Hobby Horizon or something like that, um, or Horizon Hobby, I believe. Um, so yeah, so it's like the Horizon Hobby Revolution Vizio camera drone. Um, but yeah, so it does have, um, unlike my Nano drone with its tiny, tiny little propellers, these ones are quite a bit bigger, of course. Um, but my Nano drone did not have the little bumpers this one does, so if you hit it into a wall, it kind of just bounces off. Um, the only way you can really hit the propellers is if you are somehow upside down on the ground or something, which that'd be kind of weird. Um, or if you fly up to the ceiling, which that's pretty much the only way that I've actually scratch these is um i've actually hit the ceiling um this also has a lot more lights of course they're also bigger lights um actually has two on the back right there if you can see those and then two on the front um and then that little that little thing is actually almost like a little windshield um that lights up and so do those two um and then this is actually the antenna thing right there um so luckily um i hopefully for none of you guys it doesn't like um just kind of naturally form out there because the propeller would hit it um but usually hopefully it stays down there like that um, but that actually just has a clip, um, which you can actually take it out. I don't really know what for. Um, I don't know if you can replace them or something if you need to. Um, but yeah, that kind of just slides in there. Um, I've never had that fall out, so that's, um, if you're wondering about that. Um, for the SD cards, um, my mom gave me this nifty little case, because I didn't have anything protective for my SD card and adapter, um, because it didn't come with one of the little plastic ones. Um, but for the SD card, you do need, of course, you do need an SD card to film and take pictures. It's actually a pretty nice place. That um, That's the whole little bottom piece right there, and it actually slides in just right there. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but uh, yeah, so um, so here is the little SD card. Um, so this is actually the adapter, and some SD cards are this size with the little locking thing right there. Um, but this part, um, you either have an SD card. Gosh, I can't get it out. Um, you either have an SD card like this, or you have an adapter, which almost always comes with one of these. Um, this 32 gigabytes right here. Um, so yeah, so you do need one of these little mini nano chips, and then that actually kind of just, let me get it started there. Um, so yeah, so it kind of just goes right there, and then you just slide into there until you hear the little click thing. Just like so, and then as you can see, it's in there. It doesn't hang out too much, but now it can actually film and everything. 
Um, and then the last thing I have to show before we get onto the rest of it is the compartment where the battery and everything goes. Um, so with filming drones, usually you actually have to, there's a compartment where to turn it on, you actually have to connect and to turn off, you actually have to disconnect wires. Um, and to charge it, you have to do it, which that kind of sucks because a nano drone, you could just flip a switch and it was on. This one, you actually have to open, plug in the wires, plug it back in. So it kind of has some things that waste the battery life, I'd say. But a lot of people I've seen reviews for this, they say that this thing breaks off a lot easier and they're, they're like the wires come detached. I think they're just being a little too rough with it because I have not had any of those problems. I don't even feel it coming or anything yet. But yeah, so that just opens with that little clip, as you can see right there. Um, there's some vents right there because this uh, it does get kind of hot. Um, and it's kind of creepy because you guys know exploding batteries and stuff. Um, but this one actually has stickers on it that say like, do not charge unattended or anything. Um, yeah, so there are the two wires right there, technically four, but two connectors. Uh, so this is a little uh, input one. Um, as you can see, it has little like blockers right there, and then the input, they would go into that one. Um, and then the battery right there, it actually slides in and out pretty darn easy. It actually has that little plastic tab right there that you can pull it in and out. Uh, so yeah, so that's that right there. As you can see, that's where it goes in there. Um, and then there's the battery itself. As you can see, it says, never charge batteries overnight and never leave charging batteries unattended. So, I don't know. It's a lithium polymer battery, so, um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I haven't heard of too much drones exploding, though. That's usually, uh, Galaxy, I believe, S8s and, um, the old version one of the hoverboards. Uh, but yeah, so that is just our battery. A lot of people also said that it only lasts, like, five minutes. Um, I, I don't know if they're talking about, like, five minutes and then they have to recharge it, or five minutes and then they full out just need a new battery. Um, but my battery, I mean, of course it's still going, but also I've... I've had to charge it quite a few times, but I mean, like, it lasts just about as long as my nano drone, which is pretty impressive because this one films, takes pictures, and is bigger. It probably takes up more battery life. Um, but yeah, so now onto the controller. Here it is. This part actually does come off, um, so I'll just take that off for a second. Um, so it actually comes with this. Um, this is how the controller actually comes, just like that, with this little plastic nub. Um, which is called the uh, faux antenna, which means fake. So I was just like, how does this work? It's literally just a plastic nub. Um, but yeah, that's just an antenna. So I don't know why you would even have that on there. I guess keep it on there to make it look more 90s if you don't have that. But that comes out pretty darn easy. Just has that. As you can see, it's hollow. Um, but I actually use this. It does come with this. Um, it is, of course, a little uh, phone or iPod connector or whatever. I um, My phone is just a little Pantech hotshot. Um, I guess you could consider it a smartphone, but I can't really, I mean, I can, but you have to, like, pay a dollar for each web, web page, but you guys know my phone, um, so I use my iPod 5th generation here, um, but yeah, so, uh, that's the angle I keep it at, at, because, of course, that's where you're gonna be, like, holding it so you can see it, of course, um, so for this, real quick, there's a little dial on the back, which you can loosen up, and then that actually, you kind of have to get it going a little bit, um, but once you do it, it just has little, um, kind of has little, fuzzy thing that goes up and it goes all the way up to there so either I mean that's like the size of like a Kindle or something um so yeah so you can I mean most phones are tablets nowadays in their size um so yeah so I think that's about the size of my iPod but then this part I don't know why um but it actually I don't know if it's so you can slide your iPod in or whatever but uh this part on the top actually does come off um it was coming off early easier earlier but um yeah so that part does come off um it kind of just slides on there with a little grippy thingies there um i don't quite know why but yeah uh because sometimes it's kind of annoying because it kind of pops off yeah there is little buzzy the little things that make the buzzy noises up there they're kind of they're kind of like a softer plastic or rubberish kind of feel so there's somewhat padding up there um but then right here there's a big old pad and then of course the second dial right there um so you can actually change the direction of the whole thing itself so if you're not using it you can just kind of like put it back right there um but uh yeah so but just tighten those up. I just always pretty much just keep it just like that. But now for the controller. Of course, my one for my Nano Drone probably looked a lot more cool with the black and neon green stuff. And it was way more small. Um, of course, it was only about like that big. This one's like a full size. It's about the exact same size as like an Xbox 360 controller. Um, pretty much the same layout almost too. Um, you got your two joysticks. This one is to go like up and down and to uh, turn the drone. This one's to go forward, back, and to the sides. Um... And then for trimming and whatnot, you have the two rate buttons right there, along with this um, that thing, those buttons. I haven't really had to do anything, because that's one of the pros of this drone, is it pretty much, it said like for beginners, start on easy, um, but of course I like mastered my 
uh, my nano drone, so I don't really need to. Um, but once you get it, I mean, if you've flown any other drone, this one's really simple. Um, it was saying, like, easy mode. I don't know how you change the modes. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, and also, it pretty much came fully trimmed. Like, it went a little to the side, so I fixed that a little bit. Um, but, yeah, other than that, pretty much good. So, you probably will never even have to use these. But those are all the trimming buttons on that side and that side. And then over here, you have these ones, which are important. Of course, um, the start and stop engines. Um, because this one you actually don't just go up when you turn it on, you actually have to start and stop the engines. This one is to actually do a flip, because I, I thought this was pretty weird, but, um, because it's a filming drone, and yes, it actually still does, um, flips, which is surprising, because my nano drone did, but that was just a nano drone stunt drone type thing. But it's pretty rare that filming drones, um, can do flips and stuff. So that's a flip button, I'll talk about that more later, um... And then this is a button that you click to film or take pictures, and I was pretty confused with that, um, but just in case if you guys don't know, to take a picture, you actually just click it once and it takes a picture, um, and to take a video, you actually hold it, um, and it will beep, and then that thing will flash, or the drone will flash, um, but to take a video, you actually hold it down, it will beep, like, um, a little more, um, a few more times, and then the drone will flash, and then it's actually filming. Um, and also to, like, actually, um, connect it to the drone, me and Brayton used to just, like, click random buttons until it connected, but it turns out we did it at some point. But I finally figured out you go, um, once you have the drone and the remote on, you actually go up and then down about just like that, and then it'll connect right away. Um, so yeah, so I guess when we're just clicking random buttons, we must have went like that or something. Um, so it's turning this on as a nice little on button right there that kind of clicks, and then it makes a pretty loud beep and then has that, but here we go. So yeah, so there we go, and you can see it's trying to find the drone right now. So we will actually connect the drone, so of course you just connect the, um, two little wires which are kind of hard to get to right there um so yeah so yesterday when we we're flying this around sunny side um i'll show all the footage and stuff for example footage at the end but um somehow this hatch actually opened mid-flight when i was pretty high up and the wires came disconnected somehow um so luckily it didn't just fall it's nose dive um it actually kind of since it's light it actually kind of landed nicely on the ground um, but yeah, so, um, another thing on the bottom, you can see these little landers, um, you can see they actually kind of go around maybe. They're actually rubber, so that's kind of nice. But you can see the little light show it does, if I turn off the lights. Um, you got the red flashing ones on the back, green right there. And then you can see with the red and the blue mixing, it's actually kind of purple in there. And then, um, kind of purplish right there, and then blue right there. So, tons of lights. Of course, once you connect it, it does not do that. Um, so I'm going to connect it with one, one hand here. So you go up, and then down and then it beeps twice, and then that stops flashing, and then these just kind of strobe like that, but now it's actually connected. Um, so yeah, so we'll fly it around it and then get on to the final parts real quick. All right, guys, so sorry if I kind of get cut off on this part, um, but I'm more worried about you guys seeing the drone, because the last one I did out in the playroom, but now uh, we have a different um, setup, of course, um, so it's kind of hard more, um, it's pretty much just as easy to fly a drone out there as it is in here, but this one's pretty easy to fly, so it's pretty easy to start in here. Uh, so yeah, so you start by clicking start engines, and as you can see, it's started, and you can barely hear it. Or for you guys, anyway, I can somewhat hear it, but um, yeah, it's very quiet. But then once you do this, this one actually gets loud. So as you can see, I'm doing the thrust now, and yeah, there it goes now. So as you can see, it is flying now. So yeah, very easy to control. This is a pretty small room, and I'm flying it perfectly fine. Um, yeah, you can see it just flying around there, and to turn it, you just kind of go like that, and uh, yeah. Alright, and so yeah, so as you can see, or you might have been able to see that, the lights actually flashed real quick. Um, that means that it did it take the picture, um, so yeah. Alright guys, so yeah, so that was the drone flying real quick, um, but that was just me to show it, you, um, you guys it flying. But, um, back onto the trick thing that I said I was going to get onto later, um, that's probably one of the bigger things with it, is, um, I'm not too bummed because, of course, I didn't even think I was going to be able to do a flip, um, but, um, it can, I've done it twice successfully, I've pretty much only done it twice, um, because, of course, I could do it for my last drone, um, but the problem with this one is my last one, it was like when you were flying around, as long as you were in some sort of motion, you could flip, and it was every single time, but this one, like, I've been in motion and stuff, and, like, it just beeps when you click the button, um, and then once I click the trick button, it just pretty much sits there and, and beeps for uh, however long, um, but, uh, yeah, so, 
that's pretty much what it does. It's it's really weird um because uh I don't cuz even in motion like I'll be like swaying back side to side to get into that motion or whatever and it still doesn't do any flips or anything like that. Um so yeah, so I don't really know what what the problem with that is. Um I don't know if you have to be doing anything really special uh but it's kind of weird because even when you're filming and you do a flip, I can't remember if on, on one of the clips I flipped while doing it a thing, or while doing it. Um, but if you ever see me like go like that and then I go lower pretty darn quick, that most likely means I just did a flip. Um, just you can't even really tell that you just did a flip. It more just kind of looks like the drone like hit a tree and is like falling and you saved it or something. Um, that's why filming drones don't usually do flips. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of weird because it just usually it doesn't do the flip. It kind of just flips whenever it wants to, which is like almost never. Um, but yeah, so now onto the little uh, extra things or whatever else it came with. So first off, um, for of course opening the little battery hatch on the back, so there's a screw, and then the little clicky thing. As always, it actually came with this cute little screwdriver with the little red thing and the super small uh, cross there. But that is also to um, work with the propellers there of course little screws in there um, because it actually came with one full set of extra propellers as you can see I've never used these these are fresh and brand new all nice and matte color uh, but yeah so of course two black ones two orange ones full set of extra propellers um, of course see so you can tell which way is going forward the orange ones are on the front and the black ones are on the back um, but yeah also um, just to uh, for you guys to look at this the camera actually has no cover I thought it was gonna have like a plastic cover um, but I guess it's somewhat good that it doesn't because um, kind of more cheaper stuff would probably kind of fog up or whatever. It's a pretty small lens, so I don't think I don't I think it should be pretty hard to do anything to it. Um, but the the LEDs right there do have a little plastic cover over them, so that's kind of nice. Um, but then the last thing is the charger. It doesn't come with an adapter. Um, of course, you most likely have an adapter anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's a little plug-in thing. Of course, um, you plug it into the little input one um, right there. Or you can actually, um, what I've been doing so it doesn't get hot inside the drone, because while you're flying or charging, it actually gets pretty hot. Um, but uh, yeah, I just take the battery out and charge it like that. Um, but uh, yeah, and then this is actually yellow. It's just like my Nano Drone or a lot of uh, other little mini RC things I've noticed. They always have on this part, um, it always lights up for charging and everything. Again, never leave unintended. Um, but yeah, so it's also yellow in there, pretty weird. Um, but yeah, so. It actually says right there, um, light light on means it's charging, and light off means it's charging complete. So it lights up red when it's still charging, and then the light just turns off when it's done charging. So that's a pretty nice little indicator. Um, but uh, yeah, so now we will get onto the app and then the actual footage of me flying real quick. Alright guys, so now for the app, um, as you can see, if I go over, that's what the actual icon looks like. It's called the VizoView app right there, uh, if you can see that little R. Um, but uh, yeah, so... But what you actually need to do first is, of course, I'm on my house Wi-Fi here, so um, you actually have to go into the Wi-Fi and um, switch to the VizoView. Um, I don't know if it's called this for everybody, but for me it's called VizoView-288E40. Um, but, of course, it's not locked or anything. That would be weird. Um, so, yeah, so you just connect. Of course, it doesn't actually give you, like, a Wi-Fi signal. It just connects you to the drone itself. Um, but you actually need to do that. I couldn't figure out why I didn't have the live view. Um, but if you don't have the live view, you can actually use this as a controller. Um, but of course I have the controller so I just use it as that but now you can actually see my bed because that's where my drone is currently sitting so if I actually move my drone uh, you can see it moving so the only bad thing about this app is, is as you can see I'm moving it as a, a um, kind of nice little just back and forth thing and you can see it actually um, kind of jumps so you might be like 10 feet lower than you actually realize that you are until it updates um, so yeah so that's kind of weird um, but yeah, so you can see all those. Those are actually the controls if you want to control the drone like that. But um, I've not done that yet. Um, so real quick, real quick, just doing this. Um, the some features you can do is of course like all this stuff that the controller can do. But also on this, if you click on um, that, uh, you can actually do this, which is really cool because you can actually do that. And then it, once you lift off, you can see the drone going around that. Um, it will actually follow a path that you draw, which I think that's one of the coolest features. Um, and then, of course, you can actually do this um, if you have, like, the uh, Google Cardboard or whatever, um, any VR thing that you can stick your phone inside of. That's actually for the VR thing, so you can actually, like those drones that have the VR goggles, uh, you can actually use this drone just like one of those. Um, and then you can also do the tricks, and you can actually do the aerial hold or whatever it's called, um, where you can just sit there and kind of just 
be there all at once um just kind of sit in there which is really nice for a drone to have i'd say um but yeah so and i do have a pop socket on there i was worried it wasn't gonna fit um but luckily it does um so yeah so um it's kind of slipping out okay there we go so i'm gonna tighten it up a little bit because it i did not put it tight enough earlier um but uh yeah so I just usually put, I don't, um, it doesn't hold it like too snugly, but I haven't had it fall out yet, and it doesn't seem like it will, um, and especially because I don't think you're usually going to be like going like that or anything, um, but, uh, yeah, so I just kind of put it until it's kind of flexing up just a little bit right there, and then it should hold onto it nicely, so, yeah, so you can see the controller with my iPod in it now, um, so, yeah, so I'll try my best to kind of do this, um, but I don't, I want to crash the drone just focusing on the camera, making sure you can see the controller, um, but yeah, so you can kind of see that now. Um, we'll start the engines. Whoops, click stop. Okay, so yeah, so um, the good thing about having the small drone though is you can't see the propellers or anything. So you'll be able to see it move now because I'm getting it going now. Alright, I'm trying to see the drone at the same time, so it's somewhat hard. Um, Alright, we're going to turn it so we can see us. So yeah, so. Um, let's bring it back a little bit. Alright, there we go. So, yeah, so see, you can see the camera flying, or not the camera flying now, right there, um, but the actual drone itself, uh, viewing the camera. Yeah, so that is the actual app right there. Um, so if you were actually to control the drone with that, of course, those would be like the joysticks and stuff. Um, so sorry if you couldn't really see it, it was just very hard because I was trying to watch the app and the drone and to make sure you guys could see the app working um, in, in, in the small little room. Um, it's kind of hard uh, to watch all three of those at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it for the drone and um, whatever else I needed to talk about. Um, so now I will have all of the footage. We actually got some um, other RCs at the same time at Amazing Toys because um, you guys know I'm on RC Mayhem. You saw um, a lot of our other RCs, but they're just like the little simple ones. Um, but now we actually got like some bigger boy ones. Um, two of them go up to like, I think like max speed of like 25 or so. And one of them gets up to about 35. That's one my dad got. Um, but they have really cool suspension and um, they have really big range. Um, uh, so some last things about this real quick is um, it doesn't say like the max height or anything, but um, I did fly it to max height. I don't know how high it was, but um, I did take a picture and that we'll see the footage. Um, but for this little drone, I would say it was pretty darn good. Um, it was quite a ways up there. Um, and also to like fly it away from you, it's also pretty darn good. Um, of course, you can't like fly it from your house to like two miles away to spy on a friend or something like that. Um, but I mean, you can fly it pretty darn far. Um, but yeah, so the RCs we, we got, um, uh, they're actually pretty darn fast. They have really cool suspension and stuff. Um, and they actually go pretty darn far. Like the, the um, you control them all with the little trigger things too. Um, but they, they go a lot farther than I was expecting them to. Um, so you also see some footage of those. Um, so uh, I guess this is also just an RC video um, to show off all of our new RC or whatever. Um, but yeah, so you also see some footage um like my uh first height test the max height test um and just whatever else there's also kids there so they're chasing them around and stuff too um but uh so yeah so that will be the footage but for me as of right now that is pretty much it um so hopefully you enjoyed all that now stay tuned for about five extra five or six extra minutes of just drone footage and stuff um so yeah so that will be coming right now bye <laughs>
are. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Way to go, Paul. <laughs> Sideways drift car. I just stopped and I don't know if they turn this way. They don't either. Whoa. We're gonna hit top speed here. Oh no, he's catching up. Dang, I could just drive all the way to the college. Goodbye. Why are you going over there? My guy. Get over here right now. Now you're in big trouble, mister. I've returned. Oh god. <laughs> Alright. Wow, look at that dust. Uh oh. 